want to talk about our opponent. They're bigger, faster, stronger, more experienced. And on paper, they're just better. And they know it, too. But I want to tell you something that they don't know. They don't know your heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries' Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder. This is Young Catholics Respond. Thank you so very much for tuning in to today's episode and listening to our programs and Patchwork Heart Radio. I want to remind you that if you have been only listening to Young Catholics Respond, I encourage you to jump over to Patchwork Heart Radio, wherever podcasts are found, and listen to our other programs. We have a wonderful program called Sowing Hope, which I host or co-host with my friend Ann DeSantis, and uh, that is a wonderful live show that we do also on YouTube twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. I'm so very excited uh, about that program. If you haven't heard it yet, I really do encourage you head over to uh, our YouTube channel and like our YouTube channel or follow our YouTube channel uh, or whatever they call it. I think they call it subscribe. And then in addition to that, uh, you can also find all the replays of it on Patchwork Heart Radio by simply searching for Patchwork Heart Radio wherever podcasts are found. On today's program, I want to talk about a few things and some things that are going on in our society, in our world, and also um, one of my favorite people. Let's start there. Let's start with one of my favorite people. Jackie Robinson is one of my favorite people. Never got a chance to meet him in person. Never got to see him play baseball live. But he is one of my favorite role models. Today, April 15th, is Jackie Robinson Day. League-wide in Major League Baseball, every person in the game, player, coach, wears the number 42 on their jersey, which was Jackie Robinson's number. His number is otherwise retired league-wide, meaning that no player can wear that number at all. That is how big of an impact Jackie had on the game. And today we recognize his impact. And we thank him for his impact on the game. Jackie was, for those of you who may not know, Jackie was the first black baseball player to ever play in the major leagues. April 15th, 1947, he took the field. His cleats, his cleats crossed over the foul line for the first time in a major league game. And he played. Jackie had an amazing career. But he was also met with incredible, incredible racism and resistance by pretty much everybody, including his own teammates. His own teammates did not accept him, did not want him to succeed, let alone the racists and bigots that were on the other teams. <laughs> Jackie had to put up with, he really had to put up with so much in his baseball career. He was spit on. He was attacked with fastballs being thrown at his head. And the amazing thing is that Jackie never, not once, fought back. You know, I think about how frequently today Major League players get in brawls, right? Somebody hits you with a fastball, and all of a sudden the bench is clear and there's 50-some-odd guys fighting in the middle of the field. Jackie was targeted with fastballs all the time. And, you know, he didn't even have the equipment that we have today in the game, right? Like, like the fastballs 
being thrown at his head and being hit in the head, he didn't have the helmet that Major League Baseball players have today. He had a hat on. He's getting pelted in the head. Now, he put some padding inside his, inside his hat. <laughs> he was smart. He put some padding in there. But the reality is it's nothing like what Major League Baseball players have today. And when you look at the resolve of Jackie to never, not once, fight back, the only thing he did was play the game and play it really well. That's the only thing he ever did. You know, when they would slander him, he would just steal a base. He would say, try and catch me. (laughs) You know, he batted 311 for his career. His batting average was 311. That basically means that he got a hit almost one in three times that he was at the plate. Can you imagine getting a hit one in three times? Can you even fathom that as you're being targeted with fastballs? Intentionally walked, you know, by by throwing behind you and just doing crazy stuff. Being slouted, shouted racial slurs at. I don't think I'd be able to hit one pitch. Let alone, I think I'd have a batting average of zero. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to focus. My emotions would get the best of me. But not Jackie. And you see, that's what made Jackie so very special is that he never fought back. He never allowed anyone to see him upset. I'm sure he had his moments back at home, crying, beating a chair with a baseball bat, something. I'm sure that he had his moments. But the incredible thing about it is we never saw them. We never saw them. He was always in control of himself on and off the field. And that is his legacy. And you see, we have so much to learn from somebody like Jackie Robinson as Catholics. Self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He possessed that fruit. It's something that I think we need in today's culture right now. You know, when we look at social media, when we look at all of the ways that we are provoked, we are provoked in so many different ways. We are prodded so that we show off our worst side in public or on social media so that then... And only then the society can come back and say, oh, well, look, he fell apart. She fell apart. All you got to do is screenshot that tweet and they know you just fell apart. So I think for us to be able to recognize that great gift of self-control that Jackie possessed when he was up against incredible adversity, And to respond in love, to respond in charity. You know, that's so hard to do. It is so hard to do. To be silent and let your actions speak louder than the words. Not many of us possess that kind of grace in today's world. And that's what makes Jackie Robinson Day so special for me. It's to recognize and know that this man made a contribution that not only changed the game of baseball, but changed society and changed people, most importantly. He changed hearts. 
by the way he interacted, by the way he confronted difficulty. He changed hearts. Of enemies, he changed hearts. Did everybody accept him fully? No. Has everyone accepted him fully? Absolutely not. There are still racists and bigots in today's society. Yes. Sometimes that's coming more and more into the public, right? That's becoming more and more prevalent in our society. We're seeing we're seeing the enemies provoke us too. So that we instead of showing grace and self-control are prodded to show our worst side, to blow up. So we can learn a lot from Jackie. There's a blog post I wrote called The Cardinal Virtue of 42 that I wrote in April of 2013. And man, a lot has happened since April of 2013. But uh, I, I really believe that uh, this blog post can provide a little bit more insight into what I'm talking about. Uh, so I reposted it today on Patchwork Art Ministries' uh, Facebook wall. I'll throw it up on Twitter as well. I, I, I reposted that post. I encourage you to just take a deeper look at it because I think that it can help some young Catholics out there that are uh, looking for a role model to follow in the person of Jackie. And it really goes into some of the details about how we can utilize and use what he gave us in his example out there in the real world as Catholics. He, he's got an incredible story. I also encourage you to read about his life and, and uh, watch the movie called 42. Uh, it, it, it's a beautiful movie, uh, and, it's, and, and it's really well put together. Uh, it's got some great themes in it, and um, I, I encourage you to take a look at it and watch it this, this weekend with your family because I really believe that, or, or your friends or whatever, I encourage you to, to watch it because there's so much we can learn from this man. So on the other side of the break, uh, I want to talk about something else that uh, I spent some time last night talking with a group of students from the University of North Carolina Catholic group, um, and I'm real excited to uh, share with you some of the things that I that, that I talked with them about last night. I think we've got some really important things kind of really stemming off of um, self-control and, 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 and Jackie's example uh, that, that we can really point to um, as a way to defeat what's going on in our culture right now. So on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about that. I'm Bill Snyder. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is Young Catholics Respond. Patchwork Heart Ministry is committed to sowing hope into broken hearts by helping young people encounter the love of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church through prayer, storytelling, and media initiatives. We invite you to prayerfully consider supporting this mission financially. Mail your tax-deductible donation to Patchwork Heart Ministry at P.O. Box 563 Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, zip code 53147. Or visit patchworkheart.org to donate online. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 53147, or online at patchworkheart.org. Hi, everybody. Bill Snyder here. Just want to thank you for listening to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. And as a founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, we have so much more going on than just our podcasts. Check it out at patchworkheart.org. What's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. 
Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. I'm Bill Snyder. It's wonderful to be with you today, and I want to remind you again that uh, you can interact with our ministry at patchworkheart.org. It's very simple. You head over to patchworkheart.org, and you can interact with us. we got our email, web store, all those really good things that you um, can go find and learn more about our ministry. Just head over to the website. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in the first half of the program, we were talking about Jackie Robinson today. April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, it is the day that he broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball. And so uh, if you missed the first half of the program because you're listening to this on the radio, I encourage you uh, to uh, listen to it later on the podcast feed. Uh, very simply, that is um, patchworkheart.podbean.com. So head over to that website or anywhere podcasts are found, and you can listen to the repeat of this if you're listening live on the radio. Thank you for listening on the radio. Um, but I I want to um, change gears a little bit, not too, too off topic, but I want to change gears a little bit to this whole topic of virtue signaling. You know, Jackie Robinson was not a virtue signaler. He did not point out... Um, he did not point out what he was doing that was virtuous. He just did it. And, you know, there's actually some really wonderful scripture that talks about virtue signaling. Uh, and, and, and really delving into this topic, I want to start there. So this comes from the Gospel of Luke, and it's chapter 18, and I'm going to begin with verse 10 for those of you who might want to follow along at home. It says this, Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. You know, we talk a lot about virtue signaling in today's culture and society. And this is exactly what virtue signaling is. Jesus, in this parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, is talking about virtue signaling. What is virtue signaling, first of all? <laughs> it's very simple. It's stating that I am holier than than you. I am more virtuous than you. Look at what I am doing. I am better than you are. That's what virtue signaling is. It's, it's going on social media. It's bragging to your friends. It's saying, oh man, I've done X, Y, and Z. I am so perfect. You see, it's just like this Pharisee. He's doing this, this thing called virtue signaling. He's saying, oh God, look at me. Look how perfect I am. Did he end up being justified in the end? No. No, he did not. Not justified in the end. It is the one who is humble, who can't raise his eyes to heaven, who stands off on the side at a distance, Right? He, that, that is the person that ends up walking away justified. The sinner that asks for God's mercy. Now, I, I, I'm not, and I don't think that Jesus is telling you not to live virtuously. He's, he wants you to live virtuously. Right? In fact, when, when you look at the scripture, um, he he actually would would love it if 
you were not greedy, if you were not dishonest, if you were not adulterous. Like, he, he doesn't want you to be those things, right? But going around and bragging about it, posting about it, <laughs> telling all your friends that you are, are not that is not the way that you're going to get to heaven. You're not going to be justified that way. And in today's society, we also have a lot of people out there virtue signaling toward the wrong virtues. They're not even virtues. Some of them are vices. We've got people confusing virtue with vice and vice with virtue. We, we, we have that. There, that is not a... <laughs> it's not a small problem, let's put it that way. I want to point out one thing that I uh, heard about, listened about, on secular radio this week. You know, I've been listening more and more to WTMJ Radio, which is uh, 620 here in the Milwaukee area. And it's an AM radio station, and it's a news station, and I, I typically don't listen to news. I, I enjoy, um, you know, light music as I drive around uh, the city in my Uber. I, I really do enjoy that much more than the news, but I've been finding myself tuning in a little bit more often, not every day, but a little bit more often to this midday radio show called The Jeff Wagner Show. And this week on his show, kudos to Jeff Wagner. Um, I just have to say that. I'm pretty sure Jeff Wagner doesn't listen to this podcast but or this radio show, but um, kudos to Jeff Wagner for... Um, one of the things he said this week about virtue signaling. And, you know, he, he pointed out that um, Will Smith, the, the actor who's coming out with a new movie called Emancipation, uh, removed his movie from Georgia, the filming location of Georgia, because he disagreed with the voting law that many other organizations and uh, sports leagues and things have recently disagreed with and virtue signaled and said, we're not going to be holding this here. We disagree with this. He Will Smith joined the very long list of, of people pulling out of Georgia over this law. And again, not here to talk with you about this law. That's not the point of this podcast. It's the point is, is that there are those groups of virtue signaling towards something that is basically meaningless, right? I mean, each, each state has a right to pass the election laws that they want to pass. And we can disagree with it or not like it, but the, that's the truth. And so the people that are disagreeing with this are removing their businesses, removing their support from the state. However, in Will Smith's case, Will moved his um, moved his filming to the state of Louisiana, which is a state that has more restrictive voting laws on the books than Georgia. Rendering this exercise completely moot. He he didn't bother to look at what the laws were in Louisiana, which are more restrictive for absentee votes. To be counted, you have to have uh, affidavits, and it's actually more restrictive than what Georgia just passed. And he's saying, "Man, look at me! I am virtuous for moving it out of Georgia, but 
but it's not even a <laughs> it's not even a about moving it to a place that has more open laws. It's just simply, I'm going to punish this. I'm not going to reward this. This is virtue signaling. It's saying, man, I am holier than thou. I am better than this. You know, as Catholics, and I was pointing this out to the group last night that I was speaking to, um, I said, we as Catholics have a much larger duty than to sit there and say, oh, I've got to um, pull this out. I'm going to remove my funding. Look how great I am. Look how holy I am by moving this or being this way or acting this way. And saying very simply, you know what? Let me get down in the mess. That's where the saints are. The saints are down in the mess making the world a better place instead of sitting up on the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the high horse and saying, oh, look at those people down there. I am better than them. You know, this is a really important topic that we have to really think about and pray about in our world today. We really need to take the time to look at the perspective of humility. We need to look at life from a humble perspective, not from a high horse, not from a lofty perspective of the Pharisee that says, Oh, look at me. I'm not like that guy. And, man, are we seeing this rampant all over our society right now. It is rampant all over our society. I encourage you to read that scripture again. Again, it's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, beginning with verse 10 until the end of the parable. I encourage you to take into a little bit deeper reflection about how you can get into the mud and serve humbly. I think a great role model for that is Jackie Robinson. And on this Jackie Robinson Day, I hope that you will persevere in your faith. I hope that you will show fortitude in the way that you practice your faith. And when somebody wants to um, push you down, or hold you down, or hold you back, I hope that you, with humility, will take a look at the pitch coming in. It could be a fastball inside. It might, be a, it might have thrown you a curveball. And just simply hit the ball. I think that's the best way that we can practice our faith. Swing the bat. Hit the ball and not talk about it. Folks, that's what I've got for you today on Young Catholics Respond, as I always say. Until next time, keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. Or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.